Hi, it's Dwyer. It is Sunday, November 14th, 2021. DwyerCrime.blog, a free site. Gamblersadvisory.com for sports bettors, a free site. Let's talk about a very interesting case where the criminal defendant was first found guilty of murder. Spent eight years in prison and then got retried. Her appeal was successful. She got retried and the jury acquitted her. Right now, I have to be careful here for legal reasons. I don't want to be accused of defamation, so I need to have everyone understand that all I'm doing here is offering my opinion based on my understanding of the evidence. Now, I don't question the burden of proof, right? The state has to prove someone is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt before that person is convicted, right? A jury has to believe the person is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt before a person is convicted. In my opinion, even though the defendant ultimately got acquitted, in my opinion, at least for me, if I were a juror, the state proved its case. Right? I believe the defendant here got away with murder. Let's talk about it. In the state of Texas, Susie Mowbray is lying in bed with her husband. Right? Her husband, according to her, has an elbow raised. So, Susie contends that she reaches for her husband's elbow. And a gun goes off. Her husband has shot himself in the head. He has committed suicide. Now let me pivot right here. I need to tell people this case has two distractions. I believe they've blinded people to the truth. The first distraction is that the victim was suicidal. I'm not going to dispute that. Susie's husband was suicidal. He had a lot of financial problems going on. He talked with third parties about suicide. He even checked up on some policies he had to see if they would pay off if he committed suicide. So I don't dispute that the victim here, and I'm going to call him a victim, was suicidal. But I want everyone to understand that even a suicidal person can be murdered. Right? If I'm thinking of committing suicide or if I'm curious about suicide and someone shoots me dead in my bed, I'm a murder victim. The second distraction, and it is a distraction, is that some of the evidence presented by the prosecution, right, alleged bloodstains on the defendant's nightgown may not have been bloodstains, right? Luminol lit up on the defendant's nightgown, but of course luminol can light up based on other bodily fluids, not just blood. Right? That evidence should not have been presented to a jury. In this video, really what I'm tackling is just what I believe happened. Do I believe Susie Mowbray, and I'm just talking about my own belief, this is America, we can have our opinions. Right? I'm just telling you what I think. Did Susie Mowbray 
shoot and kill her husband. Based on the evidence presented by the prosecution, I personally believe, again it's just my opinion, that the answer is yes. Let's talk about why. Now the husband is sleeping on his left side. His left hand is under the pillow. That's under his head. Right, his right hand is under covers. Right, it's not out in the open, folks. This is the guy who is in bed, snuggled up. Now, just food for thought here. The bullet goes through the right side of his head. That's where it enters. It goes through his head. It goes through the pillow. It goes through his left hand. Right? So we know. Because his left hand is shot with the bullet. That the husband could not have shot himself with the left hand that's under his pillow. Right? We know that. So the only scenario where he could have shot himself, right, in a room where there's only one other person, his wife, Susie Mowbray, is if he, and he's right-handed, used his right hand to shoot himself in the head as he laid in the bed. Well, here's the problem. His right hand is found under the covers. Estela Mauricio, who was dispatched to the Mowbray residence just after the shooting, testifies that she arrives. She sees the victim dead in the bed. Excuse me. She sees the husband in the bed. He's still alive. These are his last moments of life, but he's been shot in the head. And of course, he's covered up. The blankets cover him all the way up to his shoulder. If his right hand is under the covers, how could he have used it to shoot himself in the head? Right? Just understand, too, that there's a second witness, an emergency technician, who also shows up at the house and finds the shooting victim to have been completely covered. Well, folks, would it surprise you to know that the person who did the autopsy, a Dr. Dom, D-A-H-M, examined the husband's right hand. He eventually dies. And of course, is surprised to see that the husband's right hand has no blood or brain matter on it. It's a bloody crime scene. A lot of blood flows through your head. Right? The doctor who did the autopsy was surprised because if the husband had shot himself with the only hand that he could have used to shoot himself, his right hand, that right hand would have been bloody, would have had brain tissue on it. There is no blood or brain tissue on the victim's hand. None whatsoever. Now let's talk about Susie. Susie, of course, gives the police a statement where she talks about how she sees her husband's elbow up 
and she reaches for his elbow with her left hand. Now the problem with that is that a crime lab supervisor looked at her blouse. Now this is a different investigation than the blood spatter investigation. Looks at her blouse and of course finds traces of lead or gunshot residue on the lower right sleeve. Right? That residue is consistent with Susie Mowbray firing the gun. It's inconsistent with her statement about reaching for her husband with her left hand. Right, folks? There is gunpowder residue on Susie Mowbray's nightgown. Folks, there are only two people in the room. If the victim only had use of his right hand, right? Because again, the left hand gets shot with the fatal shot. Then why is there nothing on his right hand that would suggest that he had used his right hand to fire a gun? Right? No blood, no brain matter. Also, why is his right hand not positioned in a way that's consistent with him using his right hand to shoot himself? Folks, it's under the covers. As I see it, just those pieces of evidence, in my opinion, prove that Susie Mowbray is the only person who could have shot her husband. Now, of course, at the retrial, there was a lot of evidence about the fact that the murder victim, in my opinion, not suicide victim, murder victim, was suicidal. Right, folks, that's not dispositive. Right? He's suicidal. Okay, I'll concede that. That simply doesn't explain what the gunpowder residue is doing on the right side of Susie Mowbray's nightgown. The defense also argued that she didn't have blood on her nightgown. Now understand, that might be true, that might not be true. Because by the time the retrial took place, evidence had been discarded. We don't have the opportunity today to do an exacting test for high-velocity blood spatter on Miss Mowbray's nightgown because, of course, the nightgown has been discarded. So, of course, the defense at the retrial gets to point out that the tests, the luminol tests, done on the nightgown were flawed. That the nightgown was a light-colored nightgown and it visibly didn't have any blood spatter on it. The defense was able to argue that luminol lights up a few substances, not just blood. The luminol lighting up on her nightgown may have been from her own bodily fluids. Right after all, this is a nightgown. You know, you're wearing it nightly in bed. Right? Just understand, though, and it's significant, that as the defense challenged 
the blood spatter evidence on the nightgown there's really no challenge to the gunpowder residue on the nightgown the prosecution theory of the case is that there are pillows between the two of them that Susie comes up has a pillow barrier between her and her husband shoots him in the head the blood doesn't splash onto her nightgown it splashes onto the pillow barrier and of course that Susie makes a big mistake her husband is asleep and Susie doesn't think to take his hand from under the blankets so when authorities arrive his hand still under the blanket it's impossible for his hand to get under the blanket especially without brain matter and blood on it if he's the one who shot himself. So I want to encourage people to look up this case. Right, I was watching an excellent show on one of these networks called Accident, Suicide, or Murder. And this case is featured on it. Right, the jury, by the way, in the second trial, where they acquit her, attached a note to their verdict that just said the reason they're acquitting her is because the prosecution didn't meet its legal burden. Right? I'm sure there are jurors who understood that the acquittal was not because they were convinced that she didn't do this crime. Understand her own story only has the two of them in the room. So if he doesn't shoot himself, then she would be the one who shot him. Right? Let me also point out too that to date, to date, we have not gotten a good explanation from Susie Mowbray or her attorney as to how the guy's hand could have been under his blanket when law enforcement arrives but yet he's supposed to have used that hand to shoot himself right folks we haven't gotten a good explanation on that point because there is no good explanation on that point. So I do hope people research the claim. I'm just talking about my own opinion. This is a free country. I'm entitled to it. Right? I believe that she did it. Right? I believe she got away with murder. The case is out of Brownsville, Texas, before my six-year-old continues to photobomb me here. Let me end this video. Susan Mowbray's legal first name was Frida. The spelling of her last name is M-O-W-B-R-A-Y. Again, M-O-W-B-R-A-Y. I encourage everyone to Google this case, quite frankly, as I see it. And again, this is just an opinion video. This case is an outrage. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.